Hey, what is up everybody? This is Steve Breach coming to you. I'm coming to you from my lunch. Sitting here talking about the announcement that was made this morning here uh, before Monday Night Raw that uh, Sting is going to be your headlining Hall of Famer uh, for the WWE Hall of Fame at WrestleMania 32 in 2016. Um, Sting is one hell of a headliner. I know that a lot of people are asking me on Twitter um, why uh, I would not attend the Hall of Fame. I pretty much came out and said that uh, I'm going to be skipping the Hall of Fame. I'm going to be selling my ticket uh, that I got in a WrestleMania package and uh, heading over to the WrestleCon Super Show because I really thought that it was uh, one of the best things of the weekend last year. And that's not taking anything away from Sting. I've said a thousand times that Sting was a fantastic wrestler. I won't knock anyone that says that Sting is one of their favorite wrestlers. He just wasn't one of my favorites. He's a guy that was there. He has plenty of good matches. Um, just nothing that really put it over the top. Uh, you know, when you think of uh, the NWO and uh, Hollywood Hulk Hogan, uh, you got to think of Sting uh, being the headliner. He's a guy that, you know, basically took a year off of his career um, to hang out in the rafters. Um, I believe during this time he went and wrestled a few matches over in Japan um, with the uh, the New Japan and the WCW talent exchange that was going on, um, but they weren't really widely reported. The, I mean, there was the internet, um, but there really was no YouTube or anything like that. So you know, to people here um, who watched Nitro, um, we just basically saw Sting hanging up in the rafters. And sometimes you might see guys, um, you know, show up on shows and not wrestle. Um, if they're injured, but this is the guy that was perfectly healthy and perfectly fine, but uh, um, definitely um, WCW um, I, I don't know. I, I think that their pay-per-views would have scored the same ratings people would have still bought the, um, the, the Pay-per-view even if Sting was there, but definitely taking you know one of their biggest stars and, and putting them on the sideline just to hang out and watch matches um, and you know, appear at the end of uh, Nitro and sort of be that shock and suspense of when is Sting finally um, going to pick a side when is Sting finally going to, to plan his uh, uh, you know moment uh, to attack the NWO? He, he was sort of uh, you know waited for everything to sort of sort itself out, and um, it, it was one hell of an angle. And um, the match, you can say one thing or another uh, that Nick Patrick was paid off by Hulk Hogan and this that and the other and uh, just the shenanigans that went down sort of takes away from it a lot but i remember when the uh WWE Network came out. We're coming up on the two-year anniversary. That was one of the first WCW shows that I watched because it definitely was one of the biggest WCW moments of all time. And uh, Sting deserves a lot of credit um, for getting to that point. But WCW, you can't knock Sting for it. Never really found a way to really capitalize on him winning the championship. I believe that you know within a week or within a month, uh, the belt was taken off of him and given back to the NWO and. Maybe that's because of uh, Hulk Hogan's contract and being able to say if he when, when and how and everything like that of what was going down with his character, if he, if he was champion or if he wasn't champion, who he was going up against, how the finishes of shows were going to be, tons of things. And it's hard to book around that when you have somebody with creative control uh, inside of the company. But um, Sting definitely was the flagship bearer. He was the guy that carried... Uh, the load for WCW, when you think of all the guys that WCW had, whether if it was Ron Simmons, Lex Luger, um, you know, Ric Flair, one way or another, every single one of those guys tested the water. They put their foot out there and wanted to see what their character was going to be like if they went to WWE. And, you know, Lex Luger came over, he became a Lex Express. He was a guy that uh, Vince McMahon saw big dollar signs in and then basically got bored of him. Uh, Ric Flair came over, became the champion, and uh, was a, a big part of the company for a year. And then basically because Vince saw that you know his, his talent was getting older and he wanted to go into youth movement uh, and try to change things up and get away from Hulkamania, he gave uh, Rick the out and said basically you're not going to be the main event here. I promised you you'd be a main eventer. So if you need to leave and go back to WCW, you can. So. Um, Everybody tried to come here, and um, it, you know, for some people they made a lot of money, but uh, you know, the, uh, the the money train ran out. And for Sting, I think part of his mystique was that he, you know, stayed true um, to WCW, never really wanting to to see what was going on on the other side. And then even when WCW closed, and guys were you know um, taking uh, deals with WWE, Sting 
didn't really want to go there. I, I know that some people have said it's because he wouldn't have fit in with the Attitude Era. He didn't really um, think that the things that they were doing um, was, was great for his Christian beliefs and he didn't want to get mixed up in that. Um, I know that there's lots of rumors that bounced around about Sting coming in there and, and I've always wondered, you know, what if like there was times when uh, um, Jim Cornette tells a story about, uh, you know, he had Ric Flair driving around the arena um, waiting for Vince and Rick to make a deal and he would have jumped ship from WCW and came back to WWE during the time when Bischoff and Flair uh, were fighting and not having fun in WCW and what would Ric Flair really would have done if he would have came in during the era of Stone Cold Steve Austin and and Rick and um, you know The Rock, uh, Triple H, The Undertaker? It was a full house of younger guys, and uh, I'm not saying that Rick couldn't have had a great match here or there, but just really where would he have fit in? And that's sort of almost the same thing that you could say about Sting. Um, definitely, you could have had a good match here or there, but I just don't know how he would have fit in. Um, you know, just you know, uh, creatively. And uh, you know, that's not anything to knock Sting. You know, he was there until the dying days of WCW, wrestled in the last match, the main event of the last Monday Nitro against a t-shirted uh, Ric Flair. And, um, you know, they both had a lot of energy um, and they both, you know, put everything into that because they knew that it was the last night, you know, the WWE production truck showed up. So, you know, uh, Shane McMahon was there and, um, you know, they definitely saw the writing on the wall that there was no tomorrow and they wanted WCW to go out with a bang and I think they went in there and had that match um, carrying the load of everybody that it was ever a WCW uh, wrestler who thought that that, con uh, that that company was going to, you know, you know, sail their uh, golden boat, um, you know, to the end of days and, um, you know, you, you can say what you want to about Sting deciding to go to TNA and staying there forever. The rumors popped up, WrestleMania um, 27, 28, 30, um, and uh, you know, the, all the way until 31 when he finally would, would jump over and um, sign that deal. And uh, I kept on saying that the, the three things that I wanted from Sting was for him to have a match against Undertaker at WrestleMania. I wanted a best of um, Sting documentary, which they've um, delivered um, with that. They've given us the, the, the Blu-ray of you know greatest Sting matches and they've given him uh, us his documentary, another three disc sets or two disc Blu-ray. And um, now he's finally going into the Hall of Fame and he can complete his career um, the way everybody wants to. So uh, it's gonna be a fun day. Um, and uh, where is it? where are we going? In Dallas. And uh, hopefully a lot of people will get to be there. Tickets go on sale this week. But uh, we'll have to find out um, how hard tickets are to come by. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that out of my group of five, only Luke is going to be going to the Hall of Fame now. And I know that Miguel's already sold his Hall of Fame ticket, so somehow we'll find a way to get rid of these other three. Um, I don't know how it's gonna work out. You can try and tweet me and ask me uh, what they're, that they're going for, but uh, uh, I don't think it'll take a hard time to sell these Hall of Fame tickets. So I'll see you guys on the flip side. Sting in the Hall of Fame. Great day.